Hi, welcome back to Android and iOS apps for your WordPress blog. So here we are inside our WordPress dashboard and we are ready to import the demo content. I have a file here. This is an XML file and this file contains the data that we need inside our WordPress blog. This contains some posts, some categories and some subcategories. So for this course, we'll be using the data inside this file and this file will be imported inside WordPress. So let's just head over to the dashboard once again and head over to tools and select import. By default, WordPress does not have the import functionality. We have to install an additional plugin and in order to do that, just click on WordPress. This will show you the plugin that we'll require and just hit install now. So WordPress will go ahead and install this plugin on our local WordPress installation. Okay, so here we are inside the import plugin now. It's working. Now all we need to do is select the file that contains the WordPress data. So just go ahead, select the file that you have. I'll be providing this file along with the video. So don't worry about that. You can just browse to the file. Select the XML file and click upload file and import. Since it contains a lot of data, this might take a while. So just go ahead and select the administrative user or the user that you have created. And make sure you select download and import attachments. What this will do, this will download all the image files and videos if there are and store them on your local WordPress installation. Although this will take a lot of time, I'm gonna keep it tagged and hit submit. So WordPress will go ahead and download all the attachments as well. This will take some time. So we'll be back when it's done. Looks like the import has completed. So in order to make sure that import is completed, we'll go to posts and we can see that there are a number of posts right here. If we go to categories, you'll see that there are a number of categories right here. And if you go to media, you'll also see the imported media content. So you can see that we have a number of images as well. Okay. Finally, we want to enable the API on this WordPress blog. So if you check out the WordPress blog right now, you'll see that a number of posts will appear on the front page. So you can see that there are a number of posts right here. You can just scroll down and read each of the posts. But in order to use this WordPress blog as a source of information in our Ionic application, we have to enable an API so that our Ionic application can fetch the data from this WordPress blog. So in order to do that, we'll have to go to plugins, click on add new. Go ahead and search for JSON API and select the plugin one by Dan Pfeffer. Okay. Just hit install now. There are other modern plugins available, but this one is the simplest one. So for this course, we'll be using this plugin. Just hit activate plugin and the plugin will be activated. This plugin will allow you to get the data from your WordPress blog in JSON format. So what you can do, you can just go to settings, select JSON API, and here you will see the number of endpoints that you can use in order to get data from your WordPress blog. As of now, no authentication is required, but later in the course, I will introduce you to a more sophisticated plugin that will allow you to implement authentication as well. So let's select get recent posts endpoint. And if you open this in a new tab, you'll see that there is an error. So we kind of get this error on a local server. And the workaround is that you can just copy this text. Okay. You can just copy the text of the method that you want to get data about. And right here after the URL of your blog, just type in a JSON parameter and give the value as the method name. So I'm typing in localhost slash Udemy WordPress blog, which is the URL of a WordPress blog. And then I'm using a URL parameter JSON and the value of the JSON parameter is the method that we want to get the data from. And as I hit enter, 
you can see that it returned me a lot of data. It returned me a total of 36 posts and this data is JSON formatted. You might not see this data formatted in your browser and this is because I have installed a JSON formatting plugin. This is an extension. It's called JSON view. So just go ahead to Chrome Web Store and add this extension to your Chrome. So you can see the JSON data well formatted. So we have to use the JSON parameter on the local servers. I don't know why it happens, but I have also set up a similar server on my website newsportal.lightsandshapes.in and here if I type in API slash get posts, I get the JSON data perfect. So I do not understand this might be a bug in the plugin. It does not work directly on local hosts. You need to add a JSON parameter, but on the remote web servers, it just works perfect. So we'll be using the blog at newsportal.lightsandshapes.in for the rest of this course. But you know how you can set up this blog on your local server as well. You can follow nearly the same procedure to set up a WordPress blog on your web server and then follow the course along from the next video. In the next video, we'll start with the process of creating our Ionic application. So see you then.